Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I had hoped against hope that I would not have to have this particular press conference um, in which I am going to cancel some regular season games. We worked hard to avoid an outcome that's bad for our fans, bad for our players, and bad for our clubs. I want to assure our fans that our failure to reach an agreement was not due to a lack of effort by either party. The players came here for nine days. They worked hard. They tried to make a deal. And I appreciate their effort. Our committee of club representatives committed to the process. They offered compromise after compromise and hung in past the deadline to make sure that we exhausted every possibility of reaching an agreement before the cancellation of games. So far, the parties have failed to achieve their mutual goal of reaching an agreement. The unfortunate thing, maybe the most unfortunate thing, is that agreement, the one we've offered to our players, had offered huge benefits for our fans and for our players. We have listened to the Players Association throughout the process. Mm -hmm. A primary goal of the Players Association has been to increase pay for younger players. I said in Orlando, and I'll say it again, we agree and share that goal. We offered to raise the minimum salary to $700,000, an increase of $130,000 from last year. We offered to create an annual bonus pool of $30 million for our very best young players. In total, we're offering nearly a 33% raise to almost two thirds of major league players and we're adding more than $100 million annually in additional compensation for this younger player group. The proposal also addressed player and fan concerns about issues like service time and competition. Baseball would for the first time have a draft lottery, the most aggressive lottery in professional sports. Also, for the first time ever, we agreed to an incentive system to encourage clubs to promote top prospects on opening day. We also proposed that the first and second place finishers in rookie of the year voting in each league would receive a full year of service, no matter how long they were in the major leagues. The MLBPA asked us to make free agency more robust. For the first time ever, we agreed to eliminate draft pick compensation a change that the MLBPA has sought for decades. On the competitive balance tax, we offered a significantly larger first year increase than in the last two agreements, bearing in mind that the competitive balance tax is the only mechanism in our agreement that protects some semblance of a level playing field among the clubs. The international draft would have more fairly allocated talent among the clubs and reduced abuses in some international markets. We also listened to our fans. The expanded playoffs would bring the excitement of meaningful September baseball and postseason baseball to fans in more markets. While we preferred the 14 team format, when the format became a significant obstacle, we listened to the players' concerns and offered a compromise by accepting the 12-team format. Finally, we offered a procedural agreement that would allow for the timely implementation of sorely needed rules like the pitch timer and the elimination of shifts to improve the entertainment value of the game on the field. And we agreed to the universal DH. So what's next? The calendar dictates that we're not going to be able to play the first two series of the regular season and those games are officially canceled. We're prepared to continue negotiations. We've been informed that the MLBPA is headed back to New York, meaning that no agreement is possible until at least Thursday. As such, camps could not meaningfully operate until at least March 8th, leaving only 23 days before the scheduled opening day. The clubs 
and our owners fully understand just how important it is to our millions of fans that we get the game on the field as soon as possible. To that end, we want a bargain and we want an agreement with the Players Association. That audio courtesy of MLB Network as Commissioner Rob Manfred announces the cancellation of the first two weeks of Major League Baseball as of this recording. The news is not good for Major League Baseball, and a lot of people are upset. A lot of fans are upset, and we are going to talk about it here on the Sports Cubicle. It is Devin Tingle. It is myself, Mike Mercado. We will make some sense of this mess, and Devin, as we try to tackle this and we try to understand what is happening between the owners and MOPA, your initial thoughts when you heard the words of the commissioner of Major League Baseball. I got to say, it's very funny because in 2014, people were praising Ron Manfred as a great negotiator. It's like, boy, how that tweet is not aged well at all. But it's very interesting. He listens like, we did this. We did this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. He doesn't mention a damn thing about what the Players Association, why they voted no or why they didn't like this deal or what they even really wanted, except for a few things here or there. So it's very much one-sided here. And I'm like, okay, nine times out of ten, who really looks like the bad guy in these sort of situations? The big, rich owner or the, you know, small middleman? And yes, as I said, uh, it's very weird uh, a union where the average uh, person employee makes a million dollars a year. But still, when you get this guy's making millions on top of billions, these guys – mostly just getting by here. So it's it's very interesting to see here. And now it's like, oh, I don't want to cancel the season. It's like, yeah, because that's money in your pockets. You're losing too here. But at the rate we're going, we're I don't see a baseball season coming here. And especially the guy like Rob Manford here who just kind of wants to be like, well, I'm doing my best, but I'm not going to say why the other side isn't tr- working with me because, you know, it probably would make him look bad. And that's kind of where I'm here at this point. But I'm like, at the rate he's going, if he wants to make, if he's fine making no money this year, that's fine. We won't have baseball this year. But, I don't think, call me crazy, Mercado. I don't think a multimillionaire is okay making no money for an entire year. And this is so multi layered. And Paul Shivari, our local baseball expert, will have his thoughts about this later on on this edition of the Sports Cubicle. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But you mentioned it, it it's not just the billionaires versus the millionaires. At this point, it's also the billionaires against the fans. Because I think in this point of 2022, let's not even think about how labor negotiations changed in 94, 95, and how society looks at the billionaire owner. Let's think about in 2022, a billionaire is not the most popular person in the world, right? And we've talked about all the different outlets now. You've taken away something that is so local, that is so personal, much more than any other sport. People who are still watching baseball are tribal about it because you spend 162 days in the summer following them because it is tradition. It's a much more civic sport, a civil sport. And this is something that I think really upsets the fan is why did it take so long for you to negotiate? This was actually a question that was asked to the commissioner. We could take a quick listen to, to the question and to the answer that has a lot of fans wondering. Hey Rob, understanding that deadlines create urgency. You locked out the players to jumpstart the negotiations. It feels like, Real bargaining went on just in the last 24 to 36 hours. I'm sure people are wondering why not over the last three three months or even longer to get to a point where you're not necessarily canceling games because there's some momentum here. Yeah, I think the, the best answer to that question is the last 10 days. We've been here ready to bargain, full committees, owners, players for 10 days, and it got going two days before the deadline. I, you know, that's the best explanation I can give you. So no explanation. And look, at this is my thing, Devin, is I understand that the commissioner's job in sports is to back the owners, is to help the owners make as much money as possible. But there is also optics to this. There are millions of lawyers and financial experts that can do what Rob Manfred does when it comes to negotiating and working with the players union. But you can find somebody that can communicate your message better. Look, there's nothing that Manfred can do that can sweeten what the owners are doing. But you can at least be presentable. You can at least trick us into thinking that you love the sport. Say what you will about Roger Goodell. Say what you will with him as a commissioner. You imagine that he loves football. That as much as he wants to make $40 million a year, as much as he wants to make billions of dollars for all his owners, At the end of the day, he enjoys the National Football League. He enjoys watching games on Sunday. 
Adam Silver loves the NBA. What Rob Manfred's doing has made Gary Bettman look like a good commissioner, and that is impossible. Now, Devin, this is also one of my big issues in this entire conversation, is that we only see it as owners versus players versus fans. But that's not the case. There's also one more group in that, and that is the other set of owners. Because within ownership, it's a civil war between the top-tier major market teams and the quote-unquote mid-market teams. And you are seeing it when it comes to moves. Pirate ownerships don't want certain things because they don't want Dodgers and Yankees being able to do it, and vice versa. So not only now as a fan base are we hoping that a league that is incompetent, we've seen, step on it time and time and time and time again. Now we have to hope that not only the players and not only the owners – but ownership within owners can all agree and come to a deal. Devin, I mean, when you hear that response from the commissioner and kind of some of my thoughts that I'm trying to work through, I mean, as we dig this through, I mean, do you think that this is just, I mean, we're, we're completely up a hill? Well, I'm not the best math expert, Mercado. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the negotiations are supposed to start in uh, December. That's when the contract is roughly up. And, you know, Rob said it's been 10 days. I don't think from December today has been 10 days. I'm pretty sure we had, what, that's three, four months, 90 days, 100 and something days. Correct me if I'm wrong here. But it definitely it's just, it's like, okay, wh- what were we doing then? Because I, re- I remember there was talks, and there were even talks like two weeks ago, like, oh, we're really close to reaching a deal. I call BS on that. I think you're just like, oh, no, I want to keep you happy. I want to make you think it's all hunky-dory. Stick your fingers in your ears and go la, la, la. And it's just the way we're going here. It's like there's, I don't, I don't see there being a season. Call me crazy. And it is definitely one of those things is, you know, I want, I do want to come to the defense. There are some good, owner, good owners in the MLB that definitely take care of their guys, their employees, their staff, you know, Jerry Reinsdorf comes to mind. And then there's guys that are really scummy that are like, I will trade you if I can, you know, save myself a buck here and there, no matter how much it's going to cost this team or cost this team, you know, uh, popularity and win wise, not so much financially, obviously they're trying to save their selves here, but definitely you do bring up a good point. It's like, there's never just one owner there or one owner, make sure I'm on camera. There's several, you know, little guys in between here, between the owner and, you know, I guess you could say the manager and get into that sort of thing here. And again, we could put 100 people in a room, Mercado, and I don't think we can get one, all 100 people to say racism is wrong. Why do you think we can get maybe 10 people on like one MLB ownership organization to agree on a deal here, let alone, you know, 300 plus? Uh, yeah, because let's say each team's got 10 management guys, uh, 32 teams, I mean, 320 people, give or take. And just, it's the way we're going here. It's like, no one no one wants to really sacrifice here on the big, and the bigger uh, billionaire side. You get it. It's, you know, protect the owners. But here's the thing, Mercado. I, I don't see owners having to, you know, sell the team after they get hurt. I don't see the owners putting wear and tear on their body. I don't see owners, you know, out there at, you know, like six in the morning working out, running laps in the rain. I don't see the owners out in the parking lot signing autographs after the game, you know. I don't really see the owners anywhere except in those nice, big, air-conditioned box offices up top. You know, they're – so really here, why sh- – other than, you know, they play the players, why the he- – I can't say the word I want to say. Why should we really care about what the owners think right now at this point? Why should we really be trying to cater to them? Who's going to make the most money here? Because here's the thing. I'm not buying a Jerry Reinsdorf jersey. I don't even think they make them. I don't know what number I put on that back of that jersey here. You you really want to capitalize here. Definitely focus on the players. They're your money. Here. I'm telling you right now, no no one's going to talk about, you know, these guys, you know, the owners years from now. But, you know, we talk about Hank Aaron, you know, all-time legend, rest in peace, you know. So many great players. That's who you talk about. That's who you go to see. And, yes, the owners play a factor as they bring these guys in. But right now, who should you really be protecting? Who's going to continue to draw that money in there? Devin, they don't care. If they cared, they would do a better job about marketing their players. If they cared, they would do a better job of of, of exploring options to make their game much more digestible. Look, the the big problem with baseball is baseball is having a midlife crisis, an existential crisis, if you will. They're, They're trying to fix the game. They're trying to change the game. But inherently, the game is a game, and we've taken it out of it. Look at I understand in basketball, three is worth more than two. I understand a home run is better than a single. I understand all that. But baseball is about the ball hitting the ground, the ball hitting the bat, a guy getting in with his glove, 
throwing it to one of the basemen. Like, there's action. I'm about to go see a three-hour Batman movie. Why am I not complaining about it? Because I'm going to be entertained for three hours. But if you're watching baseball, we know that there's downtime in the game. But you want to watch baseball. You want it to be entertaining. You want to see guys stealing bases. You want to see strikeouts. You want to see guys go from second to home. You want to see these things. But the owners don't care about that. The owners look at this as a portfolio. Look at this is a story I heard. I, I bring him up a bunch. It's from Dave Sampson. He was a executive vice president of the Marlins. His stepfather owned the Marlins before the transition with Jeter happened. And he brings it up all the time that they only worry about money, the down payment, whatever they're able to get paid. But he brought up this story about Steve Ballmer, the other half of Microsoft. That's not Bill Gates. Couldn't get a reservation to a restaurant in California forever. And then one day, he buys the LA Clippers. And now he's invited to openings of restaurants. That's what this is. Now, I like to think that Jerry Reinsdorf, that the Ricketts, for the most part, that, again, the Reinsdorfs, that the Wirtz family, that all these teams that are owned, even the McCaskies, that they love their organizations. They want to make as much money as possible, but they also somewhat want to win. I can't say that about most owners in Major League Baseball. I can tell you Mark Cuban wants to win an NBA Finals. But I can't guarantee that the owner of the Pirates really cares if at the end of the day, his team is going to go from worth $2 billion to $2.1 billion in the next three and a half years. Baseball is in trouble not because the game is boring, not because the players aren't great, not because you can't hold the attention span of the audience. It's because the people behind it don't love it. And that's the problem, in my opinion, with Major League Baseball. Now, I, Devin, I'm going to throw it to you. This is something that I brought up on social media. You guys can actually follow us on social media over at Sports Cubicle TV. And as we have had this conversation, it's the one thing that keeps me very interested. The options that people have. You can, I just talked about it, three hours at a Batman movie, Disney Plus, Amazon, Hulu, Apple TV, Paramount, Peacock, you name it. There's a stream, there's something for you. There's museums, there's your cell phone, there's Netflix. You can go out in nature in the middle of spring now. Baseball is in trouble if they don't play. And I've always said the owners know the exact doomsday that they need to start playing games, the exact number for them to make all their money to make it to the playoffs. And I asked this question on Sports Cubicle TV. Make sure you guys are following us on Twitter. Are you done with Major League Baseball? If so, why? And our two options are never and hell yes. So far, with just over 30 votes, it is 70% never. And Devin, when you hear that, do you think baseball actually has a chance of really taking a dip if they don't play baseball the first two months or so of the spring? I would like to say that. I would like to say the fans have said they've had enough, but look at this. Every time every time any league goes on strike, what happens like the first game of the season? It sells out in no time. And that's the thing. That does come on the fans sort of thing here. I'm like, if we really want to hurt these guys, like, no, we're sick and tired of you making us wait. You know what? I'm going to protest the next two weeks of the season because you made us wait two weeks for the season to start here. Do I think the game's in trouble? A little debatable there. I, do, I mean, as we've learned, sports in general are definitely having a real hard time ca capturing the younger audience. That's why you can see football games on Nickelodeon now because they're desperately trying to grab those younger audiences now. But do I think base... I, I, this year, maybe, for definitely, you know, it's going to definitely hurt the popularity and they're not going to make their much mo as much money if we get a season. I'm pretty much sure that this, uh, the basis is, is done. There is no season this year. Time to figure out what I'm going to do for the next, uh, you know, few months this spring and summer. But I'm not too worried about the base future of baseball overall. I mean, it's going to change. It's going to evolve. That's what, that's what happens to everything. I mean, you know, 20-something years ago, you and I were, like, pooing in our pants and crying all the time. Now we can walk and talk and go to the bathroom. Crazy concept. Things change. But, you know, it's going to definitely be an interesting sort of thing here. We're going to have to check in on Paul Shivari this summer if there is no season daily because that man's going to lose it. I mean, you can easily you, – you say you can go do these things with our Batmans. I – no, Paul can't do that unless, you know, <laughs> Batman's hitting home runs or, you know, snagging fly balls here. 
but it's definitely one of those things. It's like this, this sports really like we need to get, you know, a fan base. We need to get younger fans. We need to get more people watching the games here. And if you think billionaires arguing with players is entertaining when it's only, only one side's really telling their story here, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not very entertaining. And a lot of people I know who, you know, are, I guess you would call the casual baseball fans. Like, they, they might watch a game on TV. They might go to a few games here and there. If the team's in the playoffs, you know, they might have, like, one or two T-shirts. They seem just kind of like, okay, baseball's not happening. Cool. What's for dinner tonight? It's like, that's that's what I'm saying here. Like, if, if we really want to make an, inf- an influence to make sure this stuff doesn't happen again, the fans need to push back when the season does start. But let's be here, Mercado. Like, the fans are not going to. I mean, I will... I will gladly watch a White Sox opening day if it happens this year. I'll watch the first game. I might even buy tickets. Hell, I, I, I am totally willing to say, here's what we need to do. But here's why I'm a hypocrite. And that is why the owners will win this negotiation. And that's why the players shall hold out for as long as possible and try to get every single thing they can. I want to play. I love our game. But I know we need to get this CBA right. Instead of bargaining in good faith, MLB locked us out. Instead of negotiating a fair deal, Rob canceled games. Players stand together for our game, for our fans, and for every player who comes after us. We owe it to the next generation. That was from the best baseball player on the planet's social media, Mike Trout. It's frustrating, and it doesn't seem like it's not going to resolve its time anytime soon. And as we know about these things... Now that they've made the big announcement, now that they've ripped the Band-Aid and told us that they've canceled games, it only gets easier and easier to cancel more and more. And as we've seen over the last few years, as long as they're able to make that playoff revenue, the owners are just fine with that. But we want to know your thoughts. How are you handling this baseball lockout? Do you even care? White Sox fans, I want to know your thoughts on Sports Cubicle TV. Let us know. Please leave us a comment. Are you upset? This team looks like it has a potential shot of making a deep run, has a chance to be vindicated for all the hype the last two years, to make things right for the way last year's playoffs went out. And now we don't know when we'll get to see them. The Cubs, are they going to be players in free agency? How is this rebuild going to be? You can't see it. And all the other lovers of Major League Baseball, let us know your thoughts. How frustrating is this? When do you think this gets done? How many games do you think we miss past opening week and the second week post opening week in Major League Baseball? We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. It's Paul Shivari. It's Dan Marver. It's Devin Tingo. I'm Mike Mercado.